I went to my doctor's visit yesterday to follow up with a new provider regarding my GLP-1. And to say that it was interesting would be an understatement. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Allie. I'm on a fantabulous weight loss journey and hopefully you'll subscribe, come along for the ride because I put out new videos every day. This is actually my second time recording this because I was I was a little irritated yesterday when I had the appointment. I recorded my reaction to it. It it was a little bit harsh because I was still kind of flabbergasted by the whole thing. So this is take two. And I just want to start out by saying for anybody who may be new that my previous provider was freaking phenomenal. Um, I would still be seeing her except she decided to take a break from working and she'll be staying um, home with her family. She has small children. I completely understand. I do not hold that against her. I'm just disappointed because she was really great. So I am seeing her counterpart in the practice and our first visit together was just kind of odd. Whenever I am seeing someone for the first time who is some kind of service provider and I am well versed on the topic, I like to play it cool because I want to see how much they know. I want to be able to gauge, is this person very educated on this topic? like my previous provider? Or is this person just kind of going through the motions? They don't really care, right? Status quo, do they know what they're talking about? Are they up to speed on the latest and greatest in the research? Blah, 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 blah. So I decided that I was gonna play it cool. First of all, let me start off by saying that I went into the office and there was a kiosk for you to check in. And I was like, we are living in the future. We in 2050. Look, we just put your cards in. It scans it. You get all checked in and answer all the questions. I was like, geez, where was this back in the day when I used to work in a doctor's office? But then I was kind of thinking about it once I was done and I was like, oh, maybe this is not a good thing because do we need front office staff if, if this is here? Because essentially it just checked us in. And by us, I mean me, you're, you're coming along with me in this story. So I was sitting there thinking about it and then the lady called me up to the window where I proceeded to have to fill out a bunch of questions um, most of which I had already filled out on the kiosk. So that was a ginormous waste of time. Okay. Then there was this little form where you have to indicate the three reasons why you're there for your doctor's visit. And I'm like, okay. I had to put this information in when I made my appointment. But okay, uh, okay, fine. I'll and then you had to hold on to the sheet and give it to whoever took you back to the office. I was like, okay, this is kind of silly, but okay. Because I, I don't know about you, but when I go to the doctor for any reason, I have a list of topics that I want to discuss. Um, I do not try to, you know, like talk to them about everything under the sun, right? I keep it under the, the purpose of the visit. But if there are certain things that I want to discuss, like a side effect or something like that, I make sure to write it down so that I don't forget. So I already had everything like bullet pointed out that I was that you needed for the visit. So let me start off backtrack a little bit. I got there 30 minutes early to my appointment because like I said, this is a new facility. Um, I'm seeing a practitioner who is new to me, right? Same people from my previous office, but they moved. Anyway, 
I was like, let me get there early in case there's paperwork, blah, 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 blah. So I get there at 730. My appointment's at 8. I do not get taken back to a room until 820. Mind you, I it, it's it's slowly getting closer and closer to the time that I'm going to have to leave to get clocked in for work. So I'm starting to get a little bit antsy and I'm like, no, just be cool. Just be cool. It's your first time here. Let's see, because there's significantly more staff at this location than there was at the previous location. So I'm like, okay, let's just see if we can get through the process, right? And still get clocked in for work on time. So I back to going back to the room and then I give the little medical assistant slash nurse the little paper with the reasons for your visit. And then she proceeds to ask me why I'm there. Okay, well, I just handed you the sheet that tells you why I'm here. So I proceed to say the exact same things that are on that sheet and she writes it all down. And I'm like, why am I writing this down if you then have to turn around and write it down? So I'm like, okay, take a deep breath. I'm just irritated because it is now 30 minutes into my appointment time and I still haven't seen the provider. So I'm like, just take a deep breath. It's not her fault. She's just doing her job. I answer her questions. I do not elaborate or go into any lengthy stories because I really just want her to do what she needs to do and then get out so the provider can come in. I proceed to wait for another 22 minutes. So now we are really pushing the time because I have to clock in for work at 9.30, my time. So we are now really pushing the envelope because I still have to get blood work, still have to meet the provider and go over everything, right? So I can get my medication refilled, yada, yada. I'm trying to take a deep breath. I open the door, I'm looking around, I'm looking for her in the hallway. I'm looking for anybody at this point to say, hey, when is she coming in here? So I poke my head out for a third time and I finally see her at the end of the hallway on her cell phone, the provider. So I'm like, great, she's gonna be coming in here any minute. So she walks in, I explain to her that I used to see the other provider and you know that I really loved her, that she was fantastic. Hopefully, you know, we can have equally good relationship. She agrees, she asks me how I'm doing. So again, I, I'm in crunch time mode. So I'm very specific about what I tell her. I talked to her about 7.5 and she's like, yeah, so how long have you been on 7.5? I was like, well, this is my third month on 7.5. And she's like, oh my God, why are you on 7.5 for so long? You're not supposed to stay on the 0.5 doses for more than four weeks. So then I have to explain to her that for those of us who are on this journey to potentially reach a goal weight that requires us to lose more than 100 pounds, it's actually not advised that you titrate up every month or that you, you know, titrate up on a specific schedule, you should stay on each dose as long as it's working. And I explain this to her and she's like, but the 0.5 doses are just meant to get you to the next dose. They're not meant for you to stay on them long term. And I'm like, yeah, except if you titrate up too quickly and you get all the way to 15 and then you max out and stop losing weight, then that's all the weight that you're gonna lose with the help of the medication. And Manjaro, Zepbound, Trisepatide, currently is, is the biggest beast on the market. So if it stops working for you, semaglutide, Ozempic Wigovi, may not work for you, 
right? Because it's just a one agonist instead of two. So why would you put yourself at risk of maxing out on the medication that doesn't have higher doses if you're on a dose, regardless of the number attached to it, and that dose is working for you? And that really got her thinking, and she was like, that's very interesting. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I've been doing it all this time. I stayed on 2.5 for 13 weeks and lost 38 pounds. I stayed on 5 for forever and a day. I don't even know how many months. So I was like, yeah. And, and I would do the same thing with 7.5 or 12.5. Like, I... I stay on each dose as long as it's working. So hopefully you can be on board with that. And she was like, yeah, I mean, it's completely up to you. If it's controlling your blood sugars and, you know, you're getting results, then yes. And she was like, you know, a lot of people struggle on 7.5. And so they just go ahead and move up after four weeks. And I was like, listen, I totally get that. I do. I plan on making a whole video about 7.5 because um, it's kind of redonkulous how many people are like 7.5, are you made of water, right? And I, and I get that, um, but that's another topic for another day. So anyway, so I had to explain this to her, which was a little bit frustrating for me because I feel like, you know, as a a provider who is who has a lot of GLP-1 patients, which she claimed that she did, I, I would hope that this would be information that you would be aware of. Like, why am I, as a layperson, having to tell you this? So there was that. I, I wasn't happy about that. But I was willing to overlook it and give her the benefit of the doubt because she did hear me out she did say it was interesting and that she would look into it and she is okay with me, you know, dictating when I go up and dose. So I, I'm happy with that. Like I do not expect every provider, every medical professional to agree with me or my views on a medication. That's totally okay. So even if she didn't agree with me, but she was willing to let me kind of manage my own health care, I would be okay with that. This is where it went downhill. So she was talking to me about nutrition, which was great. And we were really on the same page until she started going off about how I should be eliminating dyes and preservatives and everything like that from my diet. And I was like, Yes, it, I mean, essentially what you're saying is true. If I could afford to do that, I would. Again, I'm in a hurry at this point. We've already been in the visit for a little bit, so I'm not trying to get off on a tangent. So I, um, I, I heard her out until she started talking about vitamins. And if you can't tell from the look on my face, I'll just go ahead and tell you she tried to sell me on an expensive supplement made by a holistic doctor. And she was talking about their natural GLP-1 supplement and how to boost my metabolism with this supplement and yada, yada, yada. And you guys, to say that I was irritated, disappointed, frustrated and flabbergasted would be an understatement. I really had to put on, I should have got an Emmy for that performance because I had to keep a straight face and go, uh-huh, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Uh-huh. While she went on and on and on about how she's not a salesperson while trying to sell me a supplement and how I should find her on Facebook and she'll add me to this group. Great, that doesn't sound like an MLM. 
and how these supplements are so fantastic and she takes this and this and this and it's really helped her and da 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 and I was like yeah sure just um I'm, I'm trying to move her off the subject and I'm like yeah could you just write it down for me and because she's got a little notepad and that way I can check it out because again I'm trying to be nice but at the same time like honey if you wanted to have this conversation where you sold me on some BS supplement then you shouldn't have been 40 minutes late to our appointment that started at eight o'clock okay if you want time to sell me on your BS supplement, then you need to work it into the appointment time. As far as I'm concerned, appointment time is over and past. I need to go get my lab work. I need you to send in my prescriptions and I need to get the hell out of here so I can get to work. Okay, I'm gonna take a deep breath. I'm, try I'm trying to be nice. So I tell her to write it down for me and I'll check it out. And I'm thinking that this is going to be some, you know, MLM, BS, right? Kim Kardashian, um, you know, GLP-1 med, blah bitty, blah bitty, right? Like, I, I, that's what I'm thinking. I'll, I'll tell you in a second. So I get my blood work done. I get my follow-up appointment set for three months. I get the hell out of there. I literally get back home with less than a minute, less than a minute to clock in for work. It was <sighs> working in a doctor's office for 11 providers who were incredibly efficient and mindful of their time and the patient's time and kept things flowing has 100% ruined me, ruined me for going to the doctor. Because now I'm living in this coastal town where everything is like, yeah, we drive slow and we take it easy and Ba -da -da, da -da -da. we talk to people in the grocery store and right like and I, and I love that mentality like I, I get it but at the same time if my appointment is at 8 a.m. I do not expect to be seeing the physician at 8 45 like that that's just anyway let me tell you about these supplements. So I got home, got clocked in, worked, and then on my break, I decided I'm gonna look at that supplement because I wanna see how Delulu she is. So I looked it up and I was like, oh, this screams MLM. This screams MLM. And then I'm looking at the ingredients which is always the first thing that I check. And I'm like, okay, all right. So this is this is pretty standard, just like any other supplement that claims to do the things these claim to do. So nothing really special stands out other than they're claiming it was created by a holistic doctor. Eh, supplements are not FDA regulated. So I could say that they were created by a unicorn doctor and that would be fine. It doesn't matter. FDA doesn't care. They're not testing it to make sure that it is what they say it is. They could be getting ingredients from China, putting it in a pill, and selling it to you for hundreds of dollars, which is my next point. These supplements were ridiculously priced. $128 for a one-month supply of something that was essentially a multivitamin a probiotic and a prebiotic all in one. Do you know how many multivitamins, probiotics and prebiotics I could buy for $128? Like, are these people just living in fantasy land? I don't have $128 a month to spend on a, a, a vitamin. Are you kidding me? I 
I just can't. Thank God I didn't look it up while I was in the office with her because I would have said, hey, so are you and all your doctor friends the ones taking these? Because clearly you're the only ones who can afford it. Why would you recommend this to a patient? Anyway, so let me just add that while this visit did not go as I planned, um, this doctor's office is close to my home. It's very easy to get in. It's easy to get an appointment, probably because they're not spacing their appointments correctly. That's why they're always running late. And they have Saturday hours, they have early morning hours, all of which is very conducive to my schedule. And that is why I keep going to this doctor. They continue to give me what I need. I don't need their advice about supplements that cost a gajillion dollars. So I know that my regular viewers are going to be like, but Allie, you're always saying if you don't like your doctor, you're not married to your doctor. Yes. As long as they continue to do what I want them to do, which is refill my prescription, do my PA correctly the first time, and document everything that I need them to document for insurance purposes, I will continue to let the convenience of their location and availability override their shenanery. But at some point, if those two items are skewed in the other direction and we have more shenanery than we do benefits, I will 100% get a new doctor. This was kind of pushing that boundary right? Selling me on supplements that, to be perfectly honest, if I reported this provider to the owner of the practice for doing this, they would likely get in big trouble. Um, you know, it, it's not, not my idea of a good time. Extremely late to the appointment, then trying to sell me on supplements, not super educated on the reason why I'm coming in, and almost making me late to work. That's that's like, you're really pushing it. You, you are about to meet the threshold of my patience. Uh, and I am the patient. <laughs> so, anyway, that was my doctor's visit. I got my medication refilled. They did everything I wanted them to do. So I don't have any complaints in that regard. But if you are going to your doctor's appointment and they're not supportive or they don't let you manage your own titration schedule or they want to argue with you or they say something crazy like the latest one that I saw was I only prescribe up to 7.5 and that's it, which I'll be making a video about that. If your doctor is not supportive, 100% get a new doctor. That's all there is to it because you have to remember it's a service industry. If they do not provide you with the service that you want, go find somebody who will. And like I said, if this, if this practice, if their shenanery level gets too high, I will 100% find somebody else. But for now, the convenience factor is really important to me. So I'm going to tough it out. If you found this video entertaining, definitely give me a thumbs up. It helps my channel. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you check out my other videos where I have helpful tips and tricks that can help you on your health journey. If you're looking for a positive only support group where nobody's going to try to sell you expensive ass supplements, you're in luck because the link is in the description box below. And we would love to have you there. And as always, be kind, rewind.